O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Jay Johnson. Uh, I'm the pastor here at St. John's in Royal, Illinois. Uh, we've just um, initiated our first candle for the Advent season. Long, it's a long tradition that churches for hundreds and hundreds of years have followed this. Um, we are at this season, in not only in this time of the year, but this year has been a time of uh, a bit of uh, heightened anxiety because of this health situation and lots of issues around the country. And so in accord with that, uh, we kind of think of what it was like before Jesus came. There was a lot of tension in his country. There was a lot of uh, uneasiness. And uh, so we're going to be talking about, over the next four weeks, some of the things that God has given to us to cause us to trust in him and to know with confidence that he is there. Our first, uh, our first lesson for this Advent season will come from an, what seems an unlikely source, but it's from the book of Daniel. Daniel has some amazing things to say for his time into the future, into the future for Jesus, and into the future for all of us. Hope you enjoy it. Uh, thank you very much for coming, and thank you for joining us with our prayers on behalf of a, a grateful people. Hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Um, as you heard in the introduction before, uh, when we had the lighting of the Advent candles, um, welcome to our the beginning of our service. Um, I'd like you to, to think of this, because this is the first Sunday in Advent, I'd like you to think of this as, uh, um, as we approach this time, it's a kind of a cold season, and we are indeed in a time of coldness in our nation. So I'd like you to think of this as uh, this coldness, like putting on a, cold, a jacket against that. And the, these will be, in many ways, cheerless days, but I'd like you to think, as we hear this reading from Jackie, about um, about the coldness of a bleak winter. Words from a popular hymn at this time of year written by Christiana Rossetti. In the bleak midwinter, frost and wind made moan. Earth stood hard as iron, water like a stone. Snow had fallen snow on snow, snow on snow in the bleak midwinter long ago. Our God, heaven cannot hold him, nor earth sustain. Heaven and earth shall flee away when he comes to reign. Thank you, Jackie. Mm -hmm. And with those words in mind, um, I'd like you to give attention as we go through this time of confession and forgiveness. Let's pray. Walking God, our companion on the journey, keep our hearts strong, for we are tempted to satisfy the immediate need and neglect the effort needed for the long haul. Forgive us for our half-hearted efforts and our willingness to abandon trust in you. Give us faith for the long journey. Give us patience when the door seems blocked and grant us hope in the darkest moment. This we believe because of Jesus. Amen. Our readings are from, we uh, begin in the passage in Daniel. Jackie, would you come and join with me? As I mentioned in, uh, as I mentioned in the uh, welcome uh, when we had the Advent uh, wreath lighting, Daniel seems like a, an odd passage to have, but given the fact that Daniel went through this very difficult time, and we too are going through a difficult time, Christ is always there. God is always present. And we'll see from Daniel some very interesting things that transpire. The this is from Daniel chapter 6. The administrators in Babylon, in order to eliminate Daniel, devised a plan to have the king Darius sign an edict to prevent anyone from praying to any god or human except for the king himself. To do this would to, was to bring punishment by death in the lion's den. When Daniel learned of the decree, he went to his upstairs window and he prayed towards Jerusalem, as was his custom, three times on his knees 
giving thanks to God. Those who were jealous of him reported Daniel's activity to the king and demanded that he be punished according to the new law, which could not be repealed. With reluctance, the king gave the order and spoke to Daniel. May your God, whom you serve continually, rescue you. A stone was brought and placed over the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet ring and with the rings of his nobles, so that Daniel's situation might not be changed. At the first light of dawn, the king got up and hurried to the lion's den. When he came near the den, he called to Daniel in an anguished voice, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve continually, been able to rescue you from the lions? And Daniel answered, O king, live forever. My God sent his angel and shut the mouths of the lions. They have not hurt me because I was found innocent in his sight. Nor have I ever done any wrong against you, O king. The king was overjoyed and gave orders to lift Daniel out of the den. And when Daniel was lifted from the den, no wound was found on him because he had trusted in his God. Verse 24, at the king's command, the men who had falsely accused Daniel were brought in and thrown into the lion's den along with their wives and children. And before they reached the floor of the den, the lions overpowered them and crushed all their bones. Then King Darius wrote to all the peoples, nations, and men of every language throughout the land, may you prosper greatly, I issue a decree that in every part of my kingdom, people must fear and reverence the God of Daniel, for he is the living God, and he endures forever. His kingdom will not be destroyed, his dominion will never end. He rescues and he saves, he performs signs and wonders in the heavens and on the earth. He has rescued Daniel from the power of the lions. Further scripture reading from Psalm 34, verses 7 and 8. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and he delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. And further along the theme of the angels, this is from Hebrews chapter 1. Are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? Here ends the readings. Thank you, Jackie. Thanks be to God. This may seem an odd odd thing to have at Advent, but the tie-in is Daniel's continual faithfulness. A great time of trial was upon the earth in the years building up to Jesus' birth. Just before Jesus was born, there was incredible tension and turmoil. Prophecies, dozens of prophecies had been foretold about this coming Messiah, where he was to be born, what was his his lineage, what were the circumstances, what was his royal background, and how had God planned it all out. In the fullness of time, Galatians says, when all things have been placed in order, all those things about those details, about the angels, about the shepherds, about his ancestors, about the star, about the wise men, all that stuff was already put in place. And when the words of the prophecy were were implanted in the cultures of that place and other places, so the time was ready to to be revealed. But who was this truth revealed to? Well, it was, it was revealed to an unbelieving world and it was revealed to those who might, might hear and might come and might believe in him. And it was revealed to those who would not believe, who would not come and who would not believe. We need to remember, not everybody hears what God has to say. God projects it, he tells it, but not everybody chooses to hear. This event that takes place with Daniel occurred about 550 years before Christ was born. 
I'd like to take a look at this quick thing. And I'd like to remind you that Daniel and his people were incredibly afraid. Being fearful is a terrible thing. I mention this because I, I think today people feel a pressure, a squeeze has been put upon them. And they at times feel as though their voice is limited. No matter who, regardless of our location or circumstances, God's promise is that he is with those who know him and trust in him. At Christmas time, we often say that phrase, Emmanuel, God is with us. But it's more than a phrase. It's more than a phrase we say because God is with us now at this very instant. I'll show you why in just a few minutes. But he's not always with everyone. He is with those who know him and who trust in him. He is always with us, those who believe in him in a protective state. He is aware of those around that don't know him, but is not in a protective state. In today's story, the administrators, as, as was read, the administrators had this plan and this plot to get rid of Daniel. Now, the book of Daniel was written about 530 B.C., um, this is really interesting. 530 B.C., Daniel was taken captive as a young man when, in 586 B.C., meaning he was about 70 years old when this was written. 70 years. Here's the point. Um, God had protected Daniel all the way from the time he was a young boy all the way through the captivity of Jerusalem being sent, to, sent away into exile. Daniel's faith was steadily growing day by day, point by point, because as God was being faithful to him, Daniel was observing the things around him, and to his amazement, he was being, as this slave, uh, this person taken into slavery, he was gradually gaining more and more and more position. He learned to not fear. You see, Daniel actually served six different rulers, six different kings, emperors, and rulers. Now, how could a slave gain that position? Well, because he knew that God was with him, and he chose to not fear. And his, as he daily walked with his focus on Christ, this is where it comes in for us. If we recognize, we do recognize that Christ is the one, these amazing things also take place in our lives. These administrators had devised this plan. They had devised this plan so that uh, Daniel would be destroyed. And when Daniel heard about the plans that were made, he knew what, he knew what the plan was. He knew that they were going to trick him and he was, he was going to be found uh, disobeying the law because he prayed to his God. You know what he did? He did exactly what he always did. The same thing, it never changed. He went up to his room several times a day he bowed, he looked out his window, he, and, he, and he bowed and he thanked God for the blessings he had. People saw that happen. I'm not going to discuss all those details. What happened, well, for Daniel, God was always there in the difficult times. <clears throat> At every turn when there was difficulty for his nation, from the time he was a lad, all the way through his time in captivity, he, he knew that God was always there and could always be trusted. When the sentence was passed and King Darius put Daniel in the lion's den, the text in verse 14 says the king was distressed. Why? Now remember, Daniel was about 70, 70 plus years old, maybe 75. We don't, we're not sure. The king is a fairly young man. Why would he be so distressed about this older man about to die? because he had built a relationship with this man and he trusted Daniel greatly. I would say that Daniel was like a father figure because Daniel would give good advice. And so, unfortunately for Darius, he had to take Daniel. They put him in the lion's den. And just before he went in, Darius said, May your God, whom you serve continually, rescue you. Uh, a very important thing to remember. Because the king stated this to Daniel as he was being lowered into the, the lion's den. And, and the king's hope was that Daniel would indeed be saved. I'd like to make a point right now. This story, this story about Daniel in the lion's den, when I was a young man, this was the story of all stories 
that I'd ever heard. This story changed my life. Why? Take a look what happens. Between verses 16 and verse 19, after Daniel was lowered into the, uh, into the den of lions, in verse 19, when King Darius comes and says, he calls out, Oh, Daniel, has your, Lord, has your God that you have served diligently, has he rescued you? Between those two events, when he was lowered down and the king came the next morning, what happened on the inside? We know what happened on the outside. What happened on the inside? I don't claim to be there, to have been there. I don't claim to know, but I do know one thing. Daniel, as soon as he was lowered down into that lion's den, he knew for a fact that God was with him. How do I know that? Because he had gone through chapters 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and he had observed that King Nebuchadnezzar three times had been defiant of God, and God put him in his place three times. And Daniel saw it each time firsthand. In fact, he was the one that was party to it. He also saw that one incident when, when those three of his friends, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, were put in the flames and the fire. Daniel saw in there, he was the one that reported it. With his own eyes, he saw that God was in the flame with his three friends. He knew, he knew that God was there in that time of fear, in that time of danger. <clears throat> He also saw when Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar was bold and brash and he made some ugly statements and Daniel actually came up to him and said, you know, sire, if you don't change, this will befall you. And it happened. King Nebuchadnezzar went insane. Daniel had prophesied because God had told him to say those things. And when he saw Nebuchadnezzar go insane, he knew only God can bring him out and he did. In fact, he not only rescued Nebuchadnezzar, he also caused Nebuchadnezzar to be a follower of the Most High God. Daniel saw that. He also saw when Belshazzar, who was the king, remember the story about the handwriting on the wall? He was there. Daniel was there. He saw how that false king, that, that non-believing king, fell from grace. You see, Daniel knew all of these things because firsthand he had seen them. I'm not saying that he wasn't trembling in fear, because he was in that lion's den. But for a, for a certainty, Daniel had for, since he was a young man, he had seen all of these events, one after the other after another. He had seen these transpire. Daniel was as confident as anything. And it didn't matter what happened to him because it was God's will. And in the process, he was saved. So when the king asked him what happened, uh, Daniel says, um, uh, in verse 12, uh, verse 21, Daniel replied, O king, live forever. My God sent an angel and shut the mouths of the lions. There's a reason I bring that up. Because we very glibly talk about angels and their role. And I'll just say to you, angels have a huge role in this Advent season. We start out with this. The story happened uh, 530 years before Jesus was born. But did you notice it talks about this angel that came? These two passages that Jackie and I read, in Psalms chapter 34, verse 7 and 8, it says, The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and he delivers them. Those who fear him, that means believers in Jesus, those people that know Jesus, he is aware and he delivers them from harm. Verse 8 says, Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. I would offer to you that when Daniel was in the lion's den and those lions were there, Daniel didn't, wasn't afraid. He didn't need to be afraid. I have the sense that those, angel, those angels simply came down and held the, the mouths of those lions shut or simply appeared and the mouths of the lions were shut because I believe that all creation responds to the power of the Most High God and when those animals, when those ferocious lions ready to, to consume Daniel, they were consumed by the presence of the, of the angelic host. That's amazing. Last verse. It says... This is from Hebrews chapter 1. Are not all angels ministering spirits that, spirits 
to serve those who will inherit salvation? That's in the book of Hebrews. That's for us. Are not all angels ministering spirits that come to serve those who inherit salvation? Why would, she, why would we be afraid? Because we do know that we have guardian angels. Everyone that's watching this, if you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, there is an angel that God has assigned to watch over you. Now, I think this is, what I'm going about to say is, I think it's, it's stunning. You remember what happens right after Christmas? Right after Christmas on the 6th of January, you know what happens? We always celebrate the thing called Epiphany. That's when the wise men came from the East. Why do I bring that in? Where do those wise men come from? They came from Babylon. How did they know to come? Well, it was about 600, about 550 years before Jesus was born that Daniel lived in Babylon. And guess what he talked about? He talked about in chapters 9, 10, 11, and 12 of the book of Daniel, he talked about the coming of one, the, the coming of one that would, would come and change and touch our lives. He was talking about the person of Jesus Christ 500 years before. And those wise men, those magi back there, they had been reading this stuff for 500 years and they realized now is the time. Remember I said in the book of Galatians chapter uh, Galatians 4, I think. In the book of Galatians, it said, when all things were accomplished, when all things were ready, now is the time. And so the words even that were uttered by Daniel 500 years before were now coming to bear fruit. Faithful one. Daniel was not fearful because he knew what was about to come. We need not be fearful in this time right now. So having said that, I'm very encouraged by these opportunities that we have in these next four weeks as we build up towards Christmas. And I'm going to ask uh, if my wife could please come up and sing, uh, sing a chorus, which I believe to be a, a hugely important one. Indeed, as we reflect on Jesus being Emmanuel, God with us, as we look to that point at Christmas to celebrate in preparation we're recognizing just how he is with us even in these times now when many of us are fearful for all kinds of reasons let us use this song as a moment to reflect before we begin our time of prayer faithful one so unchanging ageless one you're my rock of peace lord of all i depend on you I call out to you again and again. I call out to you again and again. You are my rock in time of trouble you lift me up when I fall down all through the storm your love is the You lift me up 
when I fall down all through the storm your love is the Jackie mentioned about how the storm and in the storm that God is our anchor. And it is true. When stormy times come, regardless of the times, stormy or or bright, uh, God is always there. Gracious Father, restore, uh, restore, bestower of all good gifts, whose watchful eye is ever on upon us to protect us and to guide us. As we enter this Advent season, encourage our hearts, though bleak winds may assail us, you are our protection. Strengthen our spirits that we may walk firmly, though at times slowly in the paths that you have laid out for us. We give you thanks for this season of Thanksgiving from which we've just come, because as individuals and as a nation, we know that we are truly blessed. Would you please Continue to steady us with your constancy. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. Holy Spirit, thank you for your servants of the past whose words guide us still today. For your servant Daniel, we are grateful for your touch upon his heart as a teenager, having guided him all his days. Likewise, guide us this day and through these days that follow, with such uncertainty, may we know the steadfastness of you, yet with us as he did, that we may follow your word, that it would be in our hearts, that you, Lord, would enable us to serve, keep us steadfast in the one true faith, Father, that we may be you for one another, in these days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Lord Jesus, as confusion mounts across the land, be with the leadership of our nation, our state, our congregation, and our community. May your words instill trust. May the model of the godly life, Lord Jesus, that you have shown be fixed fixed in our hearts. For those less fortunate, for those who are on the fringe of poverty, those who are dispossessed and would seek out for comfort and protection, may we seek them out. May we be consoling for them in their sojourn on earth. We are here as your representatives. May we speak for you and to the needs of those who do not have and who long for you. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. Guiding Spirit, please be with our students, babies, infants, those who wander along unsure faith, unsure paths. Be with those who are afraid and those who feel as, they are, as though they're being slowly diminished, as though they're being set aside. Lord, this season is causing so much consternation for so many in different ways, Lord. The stresses in families are real. The loneliness is real. Father, please come by your spirit and presence yourself that all may know that you are Mm. with them, Emmanuel. Lord, please bring into each life the brightness of your counsel May you use each of your servants to speak hope and unity that indeed the Lord is with us and among us. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. 
God of all consolation, be with our loved ones near and far, known and unknown, in their times of difficult, difficulty and in their hours of trial. Be their comfort. We ask especially that you would please be with the comfort of Elvin Holes, who was laid to rest just a few days ago. We ask that you would continue to minister to his family, to his loved ones, and to the, those especially dear to him. We ask that you would be with those who are suffering through this, through this recent spike in this coronavirus. Father, as I go through these names, and we do pray these, we, we, we do this every week. But Father, I, I would ask that those who are hearing right now, that are hearing to these prayers, that they themselves would add to these prayers upon their hearts, that they would speak those words within their own spirits that could say it out loud. So they would offer these, these words up in your hearing and in their own hearing as well. We pray, Father, you would please be with Ron Frericks as he goes through his time of difficulty. Please continue to be with Regina Grunwald and Kim Buspoon. Please be with Mandy Ram. Please be with Linda Frericks. Continue to be with Delmer Grusing. Please be with our friend Lee and our colleague in Bangladesh, Jahangir. Minister to him because of his faith he walks and continues to share truth about you. We give you thanks for our dear, dear sister, Yuna Francisco. Minister her to her and her husband, Robert, right now as she goes through this difficult time. And likewise, to please be with Jan Ziller. Jan is a, a blessed woman and continues to bless those in her family. Touch her right now. Please watch over Herb and Bev Thompson. Minister to them and to Lonnie Freeman, to Elizabeth Hofferman. Continue to be with... Samantha Hutchinson and Wilma Sloan and Dennis Maher continue to be with Brian Henry. Watch over him and Dorothy Albers and Allie Kramer. And especially, Father, for our loved ones in the nursing home that cannot get out, we do know that there's a very difficult situation going on in the nursing homes, not just here, but around, around the country. Father, this, this loneliness is spiking. It's it's taking a terrible toll on our loved ones. We ask that you would please be with Jerry Osterber and Geb Sage, continue to be with Leon Bloom and Corny Johnson, and Lois Ferrix, Betty Hulls and Herb and Betty Osterber and Billy Busboom. And lastly, Father, we ask that in this Advent season, as our nation goes towards Christmas and they think about Christmas, may they think, may their Predominant thoughts be about the Christ of Christmas. Father, because we are a witness to the world, the world longs to hear about truth, about peace that comes. Peace comes in a person. It's not a political leader. It's the person of Jesus Christ who died for our sins. We pray these things in his precious name. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you are with us all those who are ministering to the sick and the needy in these days. As the numbers of people needing attention increase, Father, please wrap your hedge of protection around yes, about Father. those who are ministering, yes, those who are in the hospitals, in the clinics, and Father, those who are at home, who are caring for, for people who are coming through the virus. Lord, please give wisdom and peace to all involved. May your healing touch be there in everyone's life, we pray. Lord Jesus, you are ever present. You are always compassionate and tender of heart yes. and strong in faithfulness. We worship you and adore you and are so very grateful for your love and sacrifice for us. We thank you too for these precious words that you shared with us that we may continue to bring before our Father together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, kingdom and the power and, and the glory, glory forever and ever. ever. Amen. Thank you, Jackie. Mm -hmm. Thanks for your time here. Brothers and sisters, we are truly grateful for this season that comes. This is an opportunity for us to receive what God has to, to give us and for us to distribute what he has given to us to others so that they may know. We are called to be examples, as we say, as we, we're normally saying in every one of our services. We are, Jesus was called to give us a model of the godly life. We are to model that behavior and show that to others. Um, I'd like to finish with this uh, benediction. May God's richest blessing rest upon your hearts in this Advent season. May his compassion fill your hearts. And may his generosity flow from, from your words of kindness to a people that are hungry for acceptance. Because of Christ we pray. Amen. Blessings to you. It's always good to see you. Um, we will be looking forward to... Uh, making some more preparations for our Christmas services. So please pray for that. Uh, we're, praying we, that there's, we're hoping that it will be accomplished. So please pray that we'll have Christmas. Okay? Bye now.